Hello and welcome to this endpoint assessment presentation where we're going to have a more in-depth look at what is required for the written report for the level 3 standard. So what is the written report? Alongside your presentation you'll need to submit a written report of 1,500 to 2,000 words prior to your assessment. To summarise the report it will demonstrate how you have acquired the key knowledges, skills and behaviours needed to pass endpoint assessment. The report will be based on what you have done during the course of your apprenticeship, stating your roles and responsibilities. So this is a reflective account between 1,500 and 2,000 words that I mentioned. It will include a title page and it should be written in the first person. I'll give a brief overview here now what is required for the written report. So you'll need to give three examples of where you solved the technical problem. Here you'll explain your role and how you selected the appropriate techniques, procedures and methods used and how any findings slash recommendations were made, your role in relation to your employer, any clients or suppliers and what you did to ensure the safety of people, equipment or data. You also need three examples of how you have identified, planned and organised resources. You could explain how you took into consideration cost, quality, safety and environmental impacts. Here you could also make reference to what equipment was used, how any data was gathered and analysed or how you initiated the project to produce a desired outcome. And you'll also need three examples of how you complied with the SIPSI code of conduct, how you kept in touch with developments within your professional area and how you will look to continue your development beyond your apprenticeship. And the PDF containing all this information can be found on our website on the below link. With that said, I'll now go into a bit more detail about the competencies that you'll need to recover in your report. So the document you'll be assessed against is the apprenticeship standard. Unlike the 10 minute presentation based on your project brief, here you must address all the competencies. Before you undertake endpoint assessment, you will have agreed with your employer that you're ready, i.e. you meet all the criteria. So now it's just a matter of evidencing this in your report and subsequent interview which is informed by the report. So how many KSBs are there? I'll break this down into three sections. So we'll look at the core knowledge that will be assessed, the core skills that will be assessed, and the core behaviours that will be assessed. So these are broken down into further subsections. So the complete KSBs, the knowledge, skills and behaviours, is made up of 21 points. And when you attend your interview, the two assessors will be marking you against the KSBs. So again, I'll stress here that you do need to make sure you meet all the competencies in this written report. I'm not going to go into detail about every competency in this presentation. I'll pick examples from each of the three sections and give you a sample as well as what you might be looking to submit. I would, however, strongly recommend that you read through the guidance document, as I mentioned, where all the competencies are laid out for you. So for the Ks, I'll look at competencies K1 and K2. So firstly, let's take a look at K1. Um, the different techniques and methods used to design building engineering services projects. So looking at K1, you might want to think about the following points. Describing an example of work that you did that went well, the choices you made and the outcomes. You might want to think about something in your work which didn't quite go so well and explain why. Or you might want to think about a technique, procedure or method you improved upon and explain why. And here are some evidence examples of what you might decide to use. You could explain what building services engineering involves and how it fits into the built environment. You could explain how you've worked as part of a team with other professionals and how you've taken part in projects involving several other disciplines. You might want to mention how you communicate with colleagues to solve problems and how you've gotten involved in meetings and certain negotiations. Now, let's look at K2, which asks you to demonstrate knowledge of the appropriate scientific, technical or engineering principles. Drawing from your own direct experience, think about how you might have worked on a particular piece of equipment, system or mechanism. 
Other evidence examples you might want to think about, including giving examples of your research or how you contributed to specific jobs. You might want to show how your own work contributed towards a positive outcome of a project or improved a process. You could also show that you have done manual or computer assisted calculations or that you've been involved in costing or manufacturing decisions about components. And here's a good K1 slash K2 example. I won't read it out, but I would recommend just pausing the presentation here for a moment just to read the example on screen. As you can see, the first paragraph touches on K1. It talks about what work the applicant was involved in and their responsibilities. There's also talk about liaising with a project manager when something isn't right and about getting involved with other traders. And for K2, there's talk of understanding or developing an understanding of engineering techniques and how the work done on site has contributed to a project. And now we'll move on to looking at the core skills. As previously mentioned, there are six core skills to be assessed, S1 to S6. The first thing you'll notice is that S1 and S2 look very similar to K1 and K2. And if you actually look again at the previous example, you can see that certain things could also apply for S1 and S2 as well as K1 and K2. So in that case, let's have a closer look at S3, which is to manage and maintain the quality of their work and that of others. As you can see, this does not need to be evidenced in the presentation, but it does in the structured interview. So for S3, you might want to think about how and when you've worked with other people effectively or when you've accepted responsibility. For your evidence examples, you could show your experience of quality assurance processes, how you've had experience of supervising others, how you've contributed to documentation, or how and when you've played a key role in a project or task involving other professionals. And here's an on-screen example for S3. Again, I won't read it out, but I would recommend just pausing the presentation at this point just to read the sample below. This also touches on a host of other competencies. Relating to S3, you can see that this is covered in here as there's talk of attending meetings, being responsible for health and safety, as well as carrying out risk assessments. And finally, we'll move on to the core behaviours. As you can see, there are seven core behaviours here, and while only four need to be demonstrated for the presentation, all of them need to be demonstrated in your report and the structured Q&A session. Again, we can see that B1 is satisfied in the previous example as there's clear evidence of a responsible approach to health and safety. You can also see that B2 has been satisfied with evidence of being proactive. So with that in mind, let's take a look at B3 here, which is being willing to learn new skills and to adapt in the light of experience. So here you'll be looking to demonstrate how you have actively sought to keep yourself up to date, perhaps by studying or using opportunities to network. And for your evidence examples, you can think about how you have carried out CPD activities or recognised and pursued other opportunities to aid your personal development. So here is an example of B3. As you can see, this example draws on learning through attending events and taking on additional roles. You can also see how this example touches on other competencies, such as K5, with ethical responsibilities. So very briefly, I'll just touch on the interview here. This webinar is working under the assumption that interviews are to be conducted remotely, but you will receive written instruction around two weeks after you have submitted your application, which will confirm this. So on the day of your interview, just make sure that you're well prepared, that everything is working and that you're in a quiet, well-lit and comfortable environment. Have an original item of ID ready to present. The interview can't go ahead without this. And finally, there will be two trained and experienced SIBSI assessors conducting this assessment. On occasion, there may also be an observer present, but they will not be there to assess you. For levels three and four, you'll start with your 10 minute PowerPoint presentation. This will be followed by a 10 to 15 minute question and answer session. Following this, there will take place a structured interview informed by the knowledge, skills and behaviours you have focused on in your written report. This will last 30 to 40 minutes. 
The questions asked in your structured interview will be focused on your written report, so there shouldn't be any surprises in store for you. It's all work that you've carried out. And just some final points to make here. To be successful in your written report, you must have addressed and passed all knowledge, skills and behaviours. Every single competency is equally weighted, so spend time on each one just to make sure you've met it. Also, please remember that the content of this report will inform your interview and any area you covered in this report could be discussed in more detail. So be prepared to go into more detail about anything you have mentioned in this report at the interview stage. And you'll find out the results within six weeks of your interview. Your official certificate will come from the Education Skills and Funding Agency, the ESFA. And the reason why it takes six weeks is because it goes to a member registration panel who do review every assessment. So it could just take a little while. And finally, please do review all the documentation relevant to your level of study prior to submitting your presentation and report. And all that's left to say really is good luck. Remember that there are other resources online to help you out and that the membership team can help you out with any general queries. You can just email them into SIBSI using the below email address. Please also visit our website to take a look at our other webinars and one in particular which looks at the wider application process for endpoint assessment. I hope you found this presentation helpful and all the best with your application.